to join you for this 12th International Forum of NGOs in official partnership with UNESCO, focusing on achieving global citizenship. Well, this is a topic which is essential and urgent. Why? Because the COVID-19 pandemic has revealed our vulnerability, our interdependence to a degree never experienced before, and it has affected every community, every family. Well, our world now is at a turning point, so to say, gaping inequalities, a damaged planet, growing polarization, and the devastating impact of the global health crisis put us before a generational choice. Continue on an unsustainable path or radically change, radically change course. This is the core message of our uh, recently released Futures of Education report that calls actually for a new social contract in education to rebalance somehow our relationship with each other, the planet and technology. For this, education has to transform and be transformative to give all learners the knowledge, skills, values and abilities to care and act with a sense of common belonging and responsibility. It requires pedagogies of collaboration, new pedagogies of collaboration, cooperation, solidarity, a new form of solidarity that treasure and sustain diversity. This is where education for global citizenship and sustainable development comes center stage. It implies actually ensuring that, that education goes beyond literacy and numeracy, albeit important, of course, still very much important. In today's interconnected and fragile world, education must also be about building peace, sustainable development, greater justice, social equity, and gender equality. In short, about learning to live together on a planet under pressure. This is the premise of Sustainable Development Goal 4.7 that captures the social, humanistic and moral purposes of education. A very ambitious target, we know. It forges the link between sustainable development and global citizenship to put learners on a pathway, on a pathway of empowerment and transformation. And this is about change, the change we need. Since entering the mainstream discourse on education in 2012, by then UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, global citizenship education has given rise to intense but healthy debates. It's sometimes perceived uh, honestly as, uh, how can I say, dissociated from local needs and realities while uh, globalization is equated in some context uh, with westernization but over the years it has taken hold as a necessary approach to sharpen the relevance of education it's not an abstract scheme it's something really very much about the change education can bring these three notions are at the art of global citizenship education are the following respect for diversity, solidarity, and a sheer sense of humanity. But today's education systems are not doing enough to help learners become global citizens. Last month, for instance, we released a report with Education International entitled Teachers Have Their Say. This global survey of uh, almost uh, six, uh, 60,000 uh, teachers around the world found that a quarter don't feel ready to teach temps related to target 4.7, be it climate change, racism, or gender equality. Nor are they confident, confident teaching social emotional skills that we know carry such uh, influence on learning. Well, education for global citizenship and sustainable development involves a change in the very experience of learning. It's not a matter of adding uh, onto the curricula, but more profoundly of a change in approach and practice to connect learning with life and nurture a global con conscience, uh, a sense of caring, a sense of re responsibility towards others, the world around and the planet itself. 
global citizenship education is a is a holistic experience that combines uh, different dimensions cognitive social emotional and behavioral learning well we know neuroscience tells us the importance of connecting these three areas for learning to take hold and be transformative it encourages learners to think critically about the interconnections between the local and the global and our relationship with the planet it entails that schools go values of solidarity and be active and engage contributors. No, es que la reunión es hoy a las 12. Yo no vi que Georgi se equivocó y puso martes. La verdad es que asumí que... ...into all dimensions of the system, from teacher training to student assessment, from curriculum development to school management. And our competency global citizenship will help it shape national education strategy. Our updated media and information literacy curriculum gives tools to deconstruct false narratives, fake news, distinguish fact from fake, and critically evaluate content on and offline. We are building the capacities of teachers to deliver transformative pedagogies and make us the power of culture to embrace and value diversity. Well, this is our approach in Iraq, where we work with our civil society partner uh, as ZOA on a gender approach uh, to the prevention of violent extremism through education. We are trying to address the gender norms and stereotypes uh, through education by strengthening the capacity of uh, 10,000 teachers and educators. Using social media, we reach more than 40,000 learners during the first phase of this, of this important project. Another good example, in the Sahel and in, Dona and in North Africa region, we are working with young leaders to build the defenses of peace and fight against the exclusionary relatives through World Heritage Camps and youth-led media and information literacy trainings. Through our trash hack campaign, we started a global movement to tackle the world of waste, starting at grassroots and community level. From the Berlin World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development last May to COP26 in Glasgow, we are seeing growing momentum to integrate climate action into curriculum. In line with UNESCO's mandate, we have kicked off a process to update an international legal instrument encompassing these issues, the uh, 1974 recommendation concerning education for international and education and peace and education relating to human rights and fundamental freedoms. The vision process will start in January 2022, next year, and aims to help countries to achieve target 4.7. Transforming education systems is a process, uh, one that can only happen if teachers are supported through professional development, if youth are empowered, and if all society is on board, united around the common vision. For too long, honestly, for too long, the voices of young people have been sidelined, at least listened to a phenomenon exacerbated, of course, by the pandemic. Young people need now to be equipped with tools to engage critically on global issues and become their, 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 themselves active agents for change. Whether these are related to peace and justice, climate action or, or other important topics already mentioned. To conclude, to conclude, I wish to highlight the driving role each of you play in, uh, can play in fostering global citizenship, from defending human rights and gender equality to advocating for education as a public good. Your organizations are absolutely vital relays in our common goal to empower individuals at all ages to build more resilient more peaceful and sustainable societies. In your discussions, I encourage you to strengthen your partnerships, cross academic borders and work intergenerationally to build this common vision and anchor it into practice. Together, 
I'm sure and confident that we have the knowledge, we have the networks, and we have, most importantly, the ambition to make education work for peace, justice, and sustainability. I thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Giannini, for this contribution and your leadership towards achieving global citizenship. With this, we are ready to open our first thematic session with two panels.